Well, welcome to the uh, online clinic on Dribble Drive Offense. Going to just walk you through uh, a very, you know, simplified version of how we do it with our team, why we play with this style, and how it's helped us. Um, just kind of diving right into our offensive philosophy and why we play with the Dribble Drive. Um, our offense and you know our program is really all about developing skilled players, and so we want to make sure that uh, the style of play that we select is one that encourages our players to get better, uh, that gives them incentive uh, so that they know if they do get better that they're going to be able to have a bigger role within how we play, um, as well as making sure that the way that we play is developing our players' skills so skill development is always happening. Uh, and then once we obviously have those skilled players and are developing them, we just want to give them space to use their skills because that's going to create and use advantages. And basically what I mean by that, uh, just kind of going off of states of offense from Brian McCormick, um, is you know neutral, small advantage, big advantage, just basically saying when does the offense begin to have the upper hand over the defense? Well, in that neutral situation, uh, everybody on offense is guarded by everybody on defense. No one has the upper hand. Uh, the small advantage would be whenever the offensive player with the ball is beginning to get an advantage. So that's normally if they're side to side with their defender or maybe the offensive shoulder is facing the chest of the defender starting to get downhill. And then the big advantage occurs whenever we completely beat our defender and the second level of defense has to rotate over. Obviously, if that second level never comes, we'll take a layup. If that second level does come, we'll pass to where the help came from and be able then to transfer the advantage and keep playing with the big advantage. And so all of our offensive concepts are designed basically for how we're going to play once we've created an advantage. And again, dribble drive gives a nice structure for us to do that. And so you can see there below basically how we play is we're going to run a quick action to get an advantage and then be in dribble drive after that in order to keep the advantage. And again, the reason for doing this is so we can play out of our offensive concepts in a nice, simple structure that gives all five players clarity for what they're supposed to do and where their teammates are going to be. So you can see here those principles of play are number one, to catch to shoot, to be thinking that the most open you're going to be is right when you catch the ball, uh, to react to attack if there is a hard closeout from the defender, if your drive is stopped, uh, to then pass to where the help came from and find the open teammate, then to sprint to respace to open up the paint so the next player can have a chance to attack. And then just the idea of penetrate, pass, pass. And basically that's just whenever I drive into a crowd and kick the ball out, we're encouraging the player who received the kick out to either shoot it or swing it. Um, because if they do drive the ball, it's going to come right back into the crowd I just kicked the ball out of. Um, so to have a pass out and then a pass up the floor or down the floor is going to give the initial penetrator room to uh, re-space, reopen the paint, and then we can attack the defense again once we've created that space. So just here is going to be a few game examples of those principles in action. Again, here, catch to shoot. You're going to see this uh, after we break the press and we're in our dribble drive of just our players thinking about shooting before they catch the ball. So here we're going to go ahead and have a cut, kick it and cut, and now Zero is already anticipating that she is going to be open and she's thinking shot before the ball even hits her hands. So again here, um, boom, if you pause it, she's in a shooting stance. Her hands are asking for the ball. She is okay if she doesn't get the ball, but she's planning to shoot so that everything she does when she catches this ball is designed if she has time and space to get off an uncontested shot. You'll see a similar idea here. And really, even in a lot of these videos, if girls don't get the ball, they're still planning to shoot, even if the ball doesn't find them. So here you're going to have three push the ball up. And again, she goes ahead and gets the space after she kicks it. And now on the two-player side, again, you can see how she's already ready to shoot the ball. She's already thinking about it because we're trying to enforce these principles to our players. So even more important than the offense and the X's and O's are these concepts. Here, three is anticipating her girl helping, and she's ready to shoot it should the ball find her hands. It does, and we get a big advantage, three. The next one, react to attack. And this is basically when you're planning to shoot and you end up getting a hard closeout from your defender, just the idea of turning your shot into a drive. Um, so here you're going to have a little action where we dribble on top of, plan to shoot, get a hard closeout, and that lets us go ahead and get downhill. And again, um, just to give you the idea of how these principles are more important than the offense, as we go ahead and react to attack here, you're going to see, again, this girl here is planning to shoot. She's already thinking, if the ball finds me, now I'm going to go ahead and have a chance to attack off the catch. So it's just a cycle of play that keeps turning itself over again. And again, we want to use dribble drive because it's an easy way for us to play within these principles often. Pass to where the help came from. Uh, this is a huge one for us. 
Um, and again here, once we have reacted to attack, we don't want to be taking tough, tough shots at the rim, but rather if our drive is stopped, we want to make a simple play for our teammate. Um, and so there's really two ways to do this, obviously, in dribble drive. The first one is just dropping the ball off to your center, who's on the opposite block, like we do right here in this clip. Um, or the other scenario would be if they end up helping down on your center, you're going to have a kickout option for a three, potentially. All right, so right here you can see if number four helps in on 30, we're going to have two players filling behind the ball. And so um, if help does come to our five, again, to kick to where the help came from would be finding either zero or 24 filling behind the play. And then lastly, again, just the same idea and same concept. Again, this one's going to be finding our five, but you're driving the ball. Five will eventually get back here. And again, this is a read dropping off the inside player. Help comes. We find the open player. Pass to where the help came from. Dribble drive really fits in well to that. Sprinting to respace. Um, basically, again, we want our, the whole basis of our offense is to attack off the catch. And so we want to make sure that when we do get in the paint and kick the ball out, we're clearing quickly to give the next player a chance to attack. So here you're going to see five kick it, clear, and that gets her a three. Sprinting to respace, key part of how we play. In a similar vein, you'll see it in this clip here once we go ahead and regain possession of the ball. All right, here we're transitioning down the floor. And again, this is going to be off of a middle drive here. Once the ball gets back to zero, she's going to go ahead and get downhill, kicks it out. She makes her cut the space, and that reopens the floor for 24 then to go ahead and attack a harder closeout and get downhill. So again, it's all those concepts working together. And then the last one, just the idea of penetrate, pass, pass. And this is going to be after a deep drive when we kick the basketball out going ahead and trying again to have a two pass flow here so we can make sure we're not driving back into a crowd. So there's our penetrate, first pass, second pass, and again we get a big advantage three. And just to go back, and again I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I do need to tell you how they keep playing on each other. This pass pass concept is going to give five time to go ahead and relocate. Now this player here is back to cycle one, plan to shoot. If it's a hard closeout, react to attack. And again, because of that two-pass structure, we've reopened the paint. Zero is planning to shoot. Five would have time to get to the opposite block. And we can keep playing, uh, again, out of those base concepts. And again, dribble drive is just a really nice structure to put in because it lets us play out of those five concepts seamlessly multiple times in a possession. And again, that's how we want to play. The dribble drive system serves our concepts rather than our concepts serving our system. And I think that's a really vital part to understand. So the structure of that, again, it's none of this matters if that first part's not present with your team. Um, but for us, we play with four guards, positions one through four are basically interchangeable. Um, the spots they're going to start at are the two corners, and that's just block extended for us. And then they fill the two rails, which for us is just the lane line if it was to come up through the three-point line. They also will use the wings, um, but again, we don't start there because we want to create bigger gaps. And then five is always going to be opposite the ball. And so the goal of our spacing is to create double or triple gaps on the floor. And what I mean by that is basically a double gap is going to occur when there's an open perimeter spot between two players. So you have the rail, the wing, and the corner. Because the wing is empty, that is a double gap. If the wing was filled, it would be a single gap. Here, rail to rail, there is no open space between two perimeter players, so that's a single gap. Rail to corner, the wing is open, that would be a double gap. Additionally, in our offense, we create triple gaps, and that would be if one was to throw to four and cut through to the opposite corner, now the rail and wing would be open. So if there's two open spaces between perimeter players, that would be an example of a triple gap. And so when we have single gap spacing within our offense, we like to pass and cut in that direction because that will then open up either a double or triple gap later on in the possession. So once you understand that basic uh, spacing, what we then like to go ahead and do is make sure we're really good at reacting when the ball's being driven. Because um, everything about the dribble drive is predicated upon the decisions that get made when the ball's truly driven. And really any offense, it's about the decisions you make when you've penetrated the lane. And so for us, really simple rules. Uh, if the ball's being driven away from you, like you see one going away from four and two, they fill behind the ball one perimeter spot. So it'd be two lifting up to the wing, four lifting to the op, or I'm sorry, uh, filling behind to the opposite rail. And then for our player in front of the ball, the rules, they fade away one spot. And so here for three, uh, they don't have another spot to go to, so they would just go ahead and step down. Again, five, we'd like for her to be opposite. And so when the ball's being driven and she circles underneath the rim to get opposite block, we would just go ahead and call that a loop. So then going into um, 
you know, some other scenarios. Let's say in this first frame, if one drives middle, four would fade, two would fade, and three would fill behind, five would stay stationary. Um, again, the only time it's a little bit different, I think you can see those concepts in any drive. The only time it's a touch different or funky is when we drive the ball baseline. And so now we would consider two to be in front of penetration, so she would push away. Five would actually get to the logo. Um, again, on our court, there's a big conference logo there. And we want to do that so we can throw a straight line pass to two. Or if X5 stops the ball, we make X2 either take five or go guard two. It's just we want to rotate opposite the defense. One is filling behind, and then four here basically needs to be available for the extra pass based on wherever we go um, off the kickout. So if we kick that thing to two, four needs to get to the wing to be available for the extra. One more penetrate pass pass. If we throw behind us to the fill, four probably needs to get over here to the rail to be available for that next pass. So she's going to be a huge decision maker. The other thing we don't want our players doing is being three in a row, and that just is where the ball, their defender, and themselves are all in a straight line. We want to go ahead and get either left or right of our defender with our spacing so the ball can find us in a straight line because we believe that ball speed creates open shots, and it's hard to have ball speed when you're throwing above defenders. We want to throw by them, and we have to do that by going ahead and spacing and trying to relocate. So even if you're filling or fading to a spot that's going to be relative you want to move in that direction but again if your defender's in line with you you got to get to one of their sides within the general location of your cut so then we know how we're going to space the floor initially we know how we're going to react when we penetrate it well then we need to have some level of structure that when we start driving where we know how we're going to go ahead and cut in space and so the one big rule the baseline rule is that when you pass to a player on the perimeter you're going to cut to the corner in the direction of your pass so you see that here, one hits four, they cut to the corner in the direction of their pass. Because two is in the corner and one is coming, they're just going to go ahead and bump one spot up to the wing. And now in frame two here, you have us driving to a single player side, which is a triple gap. And so again, think penetration reaction rules, three is going to fade away a little bit. Um, two is going to fill behind, one is going to fill behind. And so we try to emphasize with our players, you can see here in rule, rule two, if you're in front of the drive, we want you to be patient. We don't want you um, sprinting up to the ball and bringing your defender into it or running away from it. You need to be patient and almost freeze and read. But for our people behind the ball, they need to fill and be early. Um, and again, that's really important. We have this single side drive probably occur more than anything. Um, so let's say four kicks the ball to three just to show the basic flow here. Their rule would be to cut to, to the corner in the direction of their pass. So you can see here they would go through that corner. Now three is attacking a double gap between them and two. And um, again, these guys here now are going to fade away one spot as four is going to go ahead and fill behind and five will loop opposite. And then the only other rule here is that if we throw the ball to a two-player side, which we have here on this two-side drive, this is going to be a penetrate pass pass automatically. We don't want one to drive the ball middle because they have a single gap between one and two. Um, we don't want them to drive it baseline because three is coming to that corner. So it's going to be a shoot or swing. And then when we get up to two, she can go ahead and drive it middle again here. So that's the baseline flow of what we do. Um, and again, it's a very simple structure, but it lets us play out of those concepts frequently. So now we'll go ahead and just show some video of those basics. And again, you can see that those basic uh, ideas of wanting to pass and cut through single gaps to create those double and triple gaps. So uh, in the upper right, I have the film going here. You'll see us on this very first pass, kick it and cut to create a triple gap, kick it and exit, kick it and cut to create a triple gap, kick it and exit, kick it and cut. And you can see here, our players aren't forcing penetration. And that's a really key uh, distinction to have is when the dribble drives everybody trying to play one-on-one, -on -one, it's really bad. But when your players are reading off their catch, not having an advantage, they just swing it and cut and things keep flowing. Um, additionally here, you'll see a very similar idea on the bottom side of the screen. Again, where we kick it and cut, we kick it. Um, this little action, to guess, an advantage, but again, it flows right into dribble drive what we're playing here and there's definitely some exceptions that I'll talk about here as well just so you can see the differences um, but again baseline rules being present here so some exceptions to our one big rule of passing and cutting is if you throw the ball to a player behind you you're gonna go ahead and stay spaced if you throw it to a player above you like I talked about in the previous slide you're gonna stay spaced and if we already have an advantage and you just quickly swing it you can stay spaced as well you don't have to actually cut um, so here the example is going to be four drives it and she throws to the player behind her. 
pull. When that happens there, we want to use this opportunity to give 24 a chance to drive left or right. They can go either way. So 4 will stay on her side. That's either to her spot or to the corner. It doesn't matter. Um, but ideally, we'd like 24 to actually attack against the grain of the defense here. So we'd throw it back and drive it down the rail to this single side with 5 getting opposite. You can't mess this offense up. 24 goes middle, and that's okay. A kick it and cut, and another kick and cut rebalances the floor. Now we have a two-side drive, and again, pass to where the help came from. Go ahead and make a play. Really easy to see there. So for our five, again, they're always opposite the ball, and if we do throw the ball back, we want them to go ahead and duck in, or they can duck in on a skip pass as well if you want to get the ball into the post. So I just mentioned, um, you know, just a, a different way to get it, the drive going a different direction after you throw it back. And it's really important within this offense to vary the flow up uh, beyond just driving middle. You want to have the option to go both ways. And so a huge way to add variance is to throw the ball to the players behind you. Um, that's an absolute huge part of our offense. And you want to make sure you're not just playing with the people in front, but also with those behind you, playing with those fill type actions. Um, and again, here, the example of variance is going to be just with having multiple passes. So I mentioned earlier, you don't want players just driving to drive. You know, I catch it, I drive, it's my turn. You want there to be some level of reading, knowing if there's no advantage for me on my catch, I just swing it and cut and life is good. So here we kick it out to the corner. You'll see right here, we get a pass, pass action, kick, pass, kick, pass, and we're able to have three different uh, you know, passes in a row. And again, we have a cut we shouldn't have, and it still works itself out. We have a single side drive. You can't mess the offense up. And some good things happen as opposed to just trying to drive the ball over and over again. Some other actions you'll see here. I'll just kind of narrate this clip for you as we go through it. Again, team's trying to jam us up. We'll just go ahead and play fast out of that. But this is going to be an example of playing with the people behind you and how that adds variance to our offense. So, uh, a general rule of thumb for our players is if, if they drive the ball and they see a ton of bodies in front of them, we want to think about playing behind. Um, so there you can see, once I go back to it, sorry about that. On three's drive here, she's going to have you know a, a crowd from behind. Um, her defender stops her, but no one guarding the fill. And again here, penetrate, pass, pass. That gives three a chance to respace as well, and we can go ahead and drive the ball. So playing with people behind you is a great way to go ahead and do that. Uh, dribble post and second cuts are another way to vary up the flow beyond just driving the ball. And in this clip here, we actually have a lot of variance to our flow. So there's our normal uh, drive to a single side. We throw it back. Now we can drive either way. We go middle, kick and cut, kick and cut. Now we're going to go ahead and drive down the rail, play with the fill behind us, play with the fill behind. That lets us drive baseline, which we turn into a dribble post and then get a second cut. So again, when you start playing with the fill, you're able to kind of almost invert the offense and go from just being able to drive middle to now being able to drive down the rails or drive the baseline as well. Another way that we do this is with a dribble on top of action. Um, and again, we just abbreviate that and call it a dot. But that's going to be whenever your drive to the single side is uh, not going downhill and you're not able to turn the corner, slowing your dribble down and playing with a handoff uh, with the player that's supposed to be in the corner. And so I'll break this action down a little bit here. Um, you know, a lot of traditional dribble drives here teach this little drop zone where you get to the elbow and you jump stop and this player tries to back door and the five goes ahead to lift up. And we don't do any of that because we want to play with speed and simplicity. And anytime we're jump stopping and freezing ourselves above the free throw line, I think we're pretty easy to guard. So for us, we asked this girl here in the corner just to read the shoulders of the driver. And so if this girl's shoulders are facing the basket, we're going to hold our space. We're going to go ahead and fade away like I talked about. Um, but if this girl slows down and begins to angle her chest and shoulders towards the sideline, that's communicating that I want her to lift up so I can play a two-man game. And on this two-man game is where we go ahead and play with a dribble on top of action. So what's going to end up happening here is you just dribble at the defender uh, that you're trying to hand the ball off. Uh, you dribble at the defender of the girl you're trying to hand the ball off to. You slow down, you sit on top of her leg, and you're going to go ahead and hand the ball to the girl behind. And this basically for us is going to be an inside-out three. So now instead of me just kicking and cutting and two players switching or a team just going underneath everything, this dribble on top of allows us to take advantage of a sagging defense. Here, shot fake gets us the big advantage. We're going downhill, and again, offense just continues to cycle itself through. They help on the five, so this is either a layup or a pass to where the help came from out here to 13. She probably helps, and that's a penetrate pass pass, and we get a big advantage shot. So it just keeps going uh, throughout the entire possession. We take the layup, and we'll take those every single time. 
Another option is going to be going back door, and again, this is going to be a read. Uh, there's two ways you can make it. One of the first ones is going to be, uh, let's see what happens on this. Okay, so this is going to be a good example here of, you'll see on this drive, and this isn't great spacing by us, but uh, 11 begins to lift too early. So we don't want 11 to be even with the GMAC logo. We want her on this NCAA logo right here. Um, this is a situation where our shoulders are facing the sideline, so that would communicate for her to lift. And what she's looking at right here is this girl turns her head, stares at the ball. We want to go back door automatically there every single time. Easy read for us, big advantage shot. So again, that's going to happen. Those back doors will occur when the drive is facing the sideline. We start to lift. This girl stares at the ball. We go back door every time. Another area you can have back doors is going to a double side drive. So you'll see us go back to the corner, go ahead and cut. And again here, defender stares at the ball, we go back door, we can throw that right off the butt of the defender with no problem. So it gives you a little bit of a cutting game there. And then the last thing is just some, you know, this needs to be something that you do on your own and you do that fits your team, but running quick actions that get you an advantage. So this is just a little Princeton chin action here. That top flare gets us an advantage. We play with the dribble handoff, turn the corner, and score. Um, we'll take that flare at the top of the key. If they go over it, we'll rip it and go. Um, but again, it's just a small action that leads in the dribble drive, and you can do whatever you want to do with your team there. So that's the basics of our system. Um, again, there's really nothing earth-shattering about it. We do a lot more than that. That's definitely uh, the most vanilla way I can describe it, but I do hope that you can take an idea to help your team. Um, but then what's more important, um, even than those X's and O's, is just making sure that your players are skilled. No system is going to work in the absence of skill. Dribble drive is no different. Um, and again, I like the dribble drive because when we're working on our skills, we're also working on our offense. And when we're, when we're working on our offense, we're working on our skills. And it just lets us be really efficient with our time. So some key skills that you're going to need to have your team be good at if you want to be effective within this offense. The very first one's finishing. Your players need to be able to finish with effectiveness around the rim. Um, and that's multiple finishes from multiple scenarios. So it's different driving angles, both baseline and middle. It's being able to play off one leg or two legs. It's be able, being able to score with your inside hand or your outside hand. Um, and then additionally, starting and stopping is huge. So knowing how we're going to catch the shoot and start our drives, how we're going to go ahead and end our drives. Getting your players to understand the difference between dribbling versus driving. We want to be drivers in this offense. So again, if we don't have an advantage, we don't want to just dribble and slow our ball speed down. If I can't drive the ball and I'm just going to dribble along the three-point line, I need to advance it and cut so I can go ahead and create a gap and the ball speed can get there. And then the last skill is just the two-man game of being able to play with the girl next to you. Maybe she's in front of you, maybe she's behind you, um, but getting really good at reading and reacting to dribble penetration is absolutely key. So how do we work on that? Well, we teach six different finishes. Um, you can see reaching with the outside hand or inside hand, a reverse light, which is also off one leg when you go underneath the backboard. And then the next three are just some powerful shots where uh, I land on two feet and I either step through or pivot away from pressure. So I have a lot of this video on the site in other places. You guys can all go there and check it out. Um, but then again, we're just trying to go ahead and have some different drills that we teach. Um, in order to encourage the girls to use these in a more game-like environment. Again, working on the end of the play. Um, so here's finishing. We call it blind one-on-one. -on -one. The offense puts the ball in the back of a defender. The defender has their heels on the three-point line. And play is live whenever the offensive player takes it off their back and starts to drive it. So again here, the very first skill you have to be really good at. And you can see we're blowing a lot of layups here. This is early in the year. It's okay to have those misses. And um, we want to make sure we're not just doing things we already know how to do, but stretching ourselves. That's a huge part of it. Um, additionally, we also like to teach our girls that if they can't get downhill or, I'm sorry, when they do get downhill, if their drive is stopped, turning their dribble into a post up. And so what's gonna, what that means is if I drive with my left hand, I get to the block and I can't score. Instead of just picking the ball up and sticking myself stuck there, um, keeping my dribble alive, flipping my hips to post up my defender, putting the ball in my right hand, and then trying to get to the middle of the floor. And if I can get to the middle of the floor and shoot a layup, that's great. If my defender stops me, I'll drop, step, and score the opposite way. But keeping it really simple there. Um, and again, we can do, you can do all of that through these drills by saying, okay, Ashlyn, um, we're going to play blind one-on-one. -on -one. If you can't score with a reach finish, you have to dribble post. Um, and you can kind of add those constraints to help them understand um, when to do it. And again, you're building that out of like a more game-like environment. Another drill that we do um, in order to help them make the decision of when they need to play off two feet, when they need to dribble post, or when they need just to go score quick is two pass one-on-one. -on -one. 
And so here the offense is underneath the basket. They pass the ball up to a passer and close out. I'm sorry, the defense does the passing. The offensive player is on the wing waiting. Um, when the offensive player on the wing catches the ball, it's live one-on-one. -on -one. We played a one-shot here. Um, and again, here you can see she goes under the basket, so she shoots a reverse layup. Like all of the decision-making here is able to get worked on. Next one, we attack a closeout, quick change of direction, play with a reach finish because we have a big advantage versus our defender. Next one here. Go ahead and play off two feet because we lose our advantage. So again, just really important for your players to understand the different scenarios when they have to use certain skills. And playing one-on-one -on -one with an offensive advantage is huge in that. The next one then, uh, I, you know, I mentioned trying to get really good at playing with the people next to you. Back tap 2v2 is a way that we do this. And so how this works is the offensive players on the baseline, the coach and defender are above them on the three-point line. And then in the opposite corner, there is a help defender and a teammate. As soon as the offense drives around the coach, the coach is going to tap the back of the defender. The defender is live as soon as the coach taps their back. And so if the coach taps their back late, the offense will have a big advantage, and they either are trying to read score or kick to where the help came from. Um, if the coach taps the back of that player early, there's going to be a smaller advantage, and now the driver has to read, the driver has to read, if I can't get downhill, do I need to go ahead and play with the girl in the corner? And that might be a dribble handoff. It might be going back door but that's up to the player to go ahead and make that read. So here we go into a handoff, turn it into another drive, and again, we're playing with an offensive advantage out of that back tap one-on-one -on -one type game. Another decision-making drill that we like to do uh, to work on penetration reaction is hand touch one-on-one. -on -one. And so here the offense and primary defender are on the baseline. The offensive teammate and the help defender are going to be at the top of the key. The offense passes the ball to the coach. And if the coach puts the ball in their inside hand, both the offense and defense run around the coach's back with the defense trailing. And now the offensive player who's on the perimeter has to react to where the drive is. So here the ball's going in their direction. They need to push away. That was a pretty bad rep there by our off-ball player. Here's a good one. They push away. Help comes. Big advantage three. How we want to play. This is a breakdown of our offense. And again, this is a quote-unquote skill development workout, but we're literally working on our offense at the same time. And that's why I love this offense. The other thing that the coach can do is they can put the ball in their inside hand. I'm sorry, their outside hand. And now it's going to be a baseline drive where the offense grabs it and goes. The defense has to hit the coach's hand and they can go ahead and recover. And now the fill player is going to be going behind the drive because the ball is being driven away from them. You as the coach here can dictate how big the advantage is based upon where you put uh, the hand that the defender has to go ahead and touch. So again here it's a breakdown. This is a skill development workout where we're literally working on our offense at the same time. And the players are able to go ahead and see and feel uh, that they're getting better at both. Some other things that we try to do. Uh, we play a lot of three on three in our practices. And this is literally we have a league every fall. And so this is just live three on three, 12 second shot clock. Ball doesn't have to get taken, uh, checked up. As soon as there's a change of possession, you just clear it outside the three point line. And now again, we're working on just playing out of our offensive concepts, pass to where the help came from, catch the shoot, react to attack, sprint to respace. And this is really good because this helps our players figure out when they have an advantage and um, need to use it or when there's no advantage and they need to go ahead and create one. And it does it at a really fast paced rate. So you'll see here as the ball gets kicked out and cleared, no advantage, so we ball screen quick. Now we have an advantage, we're trying to use it. Short closeout, deep three, we'll take it every time. So three on three is a huge way that we work on that. Uh, additionally, you can take those one on one drills I showed you and you can build them into two on two. Again, where you're driving now and you're making that decision, should I shoot it or should I pass it? So this drill here is one where we start with the defender on the inside hip. Offense starts with the drive whenever they want, and you're just reading that help defender. Do I shoot it or do I skip the ball to my teammate? A few others that we do, and again, just to help work on our offense, four on three shooting is huge for our perimeter players reacting to the drive. There's three defenders inside the paint, four people on the perimeter that are on offense. The coach will throw the ball out. As soon as the offense catches it, they have to drive either the first or second pass, and then the players who are off the ball have to go ahead and react to that drive. Now, you're allowed to shoot a layup, so the defense has to go ahead and stop your drive if you do t go in there. And again, we're now working on penetrate, pass, pass, players being shot ready. Again, this is a skill development segment in practice where we're working on our skills, but at the same time, we're also developing our offense, and we're able to be really efficient there. Huge part of what we do. 
And then lastly, um, again, we try to, even our five on five, incorporate decision making and playing with the speed we want. So here's a uh, drill called free throw transition. Team shoots the free throw. They have four defenders. We're trying to move the ball up the floor as quickly as possible. And again, keep the advantage, not slow the ball down, play with ball speed, react to penetration, boom, great possession there, how we want to play, and it occurs in a five on four. As this drill goes, you can also have a defender recover in late. Um, I'll skip ahead to where we do that here shortly, but again, you can just see. Now we're working transition, passing to where the help came from. Could be a little quicker there with our ball speed. Uh, this is not a great possession for us here. Um, I think we passed up a shot or two and didn't play with the speed we needed to. But uh, the very next clip I think will show, again, reacting to penetration here, getting big advantage shots, passing to where the help came from, getting to the free throw line. Uh, now in the next clip, we add in a recovering defender. So the girl there on the baseline, play starts. I then send her in. And now, again, we're playing quick. Recovering defender pops in, trying to play with ball speed, trying to find the big advantage, able to do that. And, again, we're playing how we want to play um, and working on offense but also working on skills all at the same time. So there you have it. Um, obviously, if you're seeing this, you're already on my website, um, and you know where you can access those resources. Obviously, if there's questions you have or want to ask, uh, my contact information is below right there. I want to have basketball conversations with you. I want to help you and, uh, again, share the game. So many people have helped me, and I want to continue to give back as well. So I hope that this was beneficial in learning um, how we play and why we play that way. Again, this is a very elementary understanding of it. Um, certainly can go deeper with some of the different products on my website. But if you're looking for a general overview, this is absolutely it. And I hope it was helpful to see how our skills and offense are connected and how the structure of our offense is designed for us to play out of those five concepts um, more so than actually run a pattern. Offense is about scoring, and we want to make sure that we're playing with that kind of a mindset, and dribble drive allows us to do that.